Have you ever imagined recording your own death? Sounds quite terrifying, right? But unintentionally or unfortunately, this happened to cave diver Dave Shaw. So did he do that by mistake? Or was this his choice? If yes, then why Dave made that choice? Stay tuned with Cave Hazards to know the mystery. Dave Shaw is a native of Australia, but has called Hong Kong his home since 1989. He has been married to Anne for many years, and they have been blessed with two children, Stephen and Lisa. Both are adults and had made Australia their home. Hong Kong's International High School has appointed Anne to the position of deputy head of school. She does not have any interest in trying scuba diving for herself, but she is very patient with Dave's enthusiasm for the activity. Dave was employed by Cathay Pacific Airways as a check-in training captain, and he flies the A330-300, A340-300, and A340-600 aircraft. Because of his responsibilities, he travels all over the world, but he doesn't have enough time to go cave diving. Dave's son was the one who first got him interested in scuba diving, and he quickly realized that technical diving was his ideal specialty. After participating in some penetration wreck dives in the Philippines, Dave came to the conclusion that cave diving was an activity worth investigating. After finishing the cave course in Florida, the only thing that has really piqued the diver's interest has been cave diving. As the duration of the dives increased, it was made abundantly clear that rebreathers were going to be required. Dave's very first rebreather was an inspiration, and he eventually used it to dive to depths that were beyond the capabilities of the unit. Because of this, he decided to purchase an MK15.5. Since then, he has altered this device by getting rid of the analog electronics and putting in their place the digital electronics from the hammerhead. For dives deeper than 150 meters, the MK15.5 rebreather is the model that is preferred use. Additionally, Dave is the proud owner of a Cis Lunar MK5P, which he employs during extended cave dives in caves that are less than 150 meters deep. He believes that the Cis Lunar has greater redundancy capabilities for dives of this nature, but it is unable to handle diving to extreme depths. Dave places less emphasis on depth than other aspects of a dive. He is most enthusiastic about discovering new places. To be in a location that no other man has ever explored before is, in his view, the pinnacle of human achievement. It would appear that going to greater depths is becoming necessary in order to accomplish that goal. Dave Shaw was able to descend the 271 meters to the bottom of the Bozeman's Gat Cave in only 10 minutes, which was only half of the time that was planned. He found the skeleton of Dean Dreyer. The world record diver entered the freshwater cave to retrieve the remains of Mr. Dreyer, who was 20 years old. Video footage shot by Mr. Shaw indicates that approximately 25 minutes after the world record diver entered the cave, Mr. Shaw also passed away. The body of the Australian airline pilot was unexpectedly pulled to the surface attached to Mr. Dreyer's body. This turned out to be a bizarre turn of events. It appeared that Mr. Shaw had become entangled in the nylon line that he had used to secure Mr. Dreyer's body. The bodies were discovered 20 meters below the surface by divers who were retrieving equipment that Mr. Shaw had left behind. Both bodies were brought to the surface when the line that was attached to Mr. Dreyer was pulled. The video camera that was specially designed for the recovery mission and worn on Mr. Shaw's helmet has provided a record of his last few minutes of life, even though an autopsy has not yet been finished. The Bozeman's Gat Cave is located in the Northern Cape Province of South Africa and is the third deepest freshwater cave in the world. Mr. Shaw, a pilot based in Hong Kong who is 50 years old, became the first and only person in October to dive 271 meters with the assistance of rebreather equipment, which allows divers to recycle the air they breathe while underwater. Mr. Shaw emerged from Bozeman's Gat Cave. His accomplishment has been overshadowed by his discovery. Even while still dressed in a wetsuit and diving gear, the Australian continued to make attempts during that initial dive to retrieve the remains. However, the fuel tanks were covered in mud throughout their entirety. 
Mr. Shaw promptly started making plans to bring the remains of Dean Dreyer, who had drowned on December 17, 1994, to the surface of the water as soon as possible. Mr. Shaw shared his discovery with Mr. Dreyer, who is Dreyer's father. He said, I promised to do my best to bring him to the surface, but reminded him, there was no guarantee of success. I promised to do my best to bring him to the surface. He started the planning process for the operation with a group of reliable divers. The body of Mr. Dreyer was supposed to be brought to the surface by a group consisting of eight technical divers and two police divers. Mr. Shaw's flight arrived in Johannesburg early on the morning of January 2, just a few hours after he had said his final goodbyes to his wife. And Mr. Shaw stayed the night at the house of Don Shirley, a diving instructor who specializes in technical diving. After that, they traveled to the Mount Carmel game farm owned by Andres and Debbie Van Zyl, which is also the location of the cave. Mr. Shaw and his team labored in the sweltering heat, climbing up and down a rocky incline that was 70 meters in height in order to get to and from the cave's entrance. They were installing safety measures. Mr. Shaw was well aware that there was no room for emotion, despite the fact that he spoke almost every day to Mr. Dreyer's parents, who were present at the scene. His main focus was on ensuring that the technical details were accurate. During a private conversation among the team, Mr. Shaw and Mr. Shirley, who would be the ones to dive the deepest, announced that no one else should put their lives in danger for them. If they were to perish, there was to be no attempt made to find or recover their bodies. It posed an unacceptable risk. Just before dinner, Mr. Shaw gave fellow diver Derek Hughes the phone number of a family friend and Anglican priest in Hong Kong named the Reverend Michael Vickers. Mr. Vickers had agreed to be the bad news contact, and Mr. Shaw had given Mr. Hughes the number just before dinner. The group of 11 technical divers got up before sunrise and drove on a gravel road that was 9 kilometers long and took 20 minutes to get to the cave, where five police divers, paramedics, and a doctor were waiting. At the pool measuring 5 square meters that serve as the entrance to the caves below, Mr. Shaw put on his equipment which included a blue helmet equipped with a video camera on the front so that he could record his mission for a documentary that was in the works. After saying his goodbyes to his co-workers, he drank some mineral water and then started his descent to 270 meters below sea level. Time, 6.15 in the morning. Mr. Shirley followed at 6.28 in the morning, anticipating that Mr. Shaw would have removed Mr. Dreyer from his tanks placed his remains in a body bag, and begun his ascent by that time. The transparent water only showed the tiniest of pinpoints from Mr. Shaw's lights, and there were no bubbles to indicate that he was making his way to the surface. He was not flashing his lights to indicate that he was in any kind of danger. Mr. Shirley, therefore, continued his search until he reached a depth of 250 meters. The computers that controlled Mr. Shirley's breathing equipment cracked and imploded approximately 20 meters away from where Shaw's lights were located. It was necessary for him to ascend in order to save himself. Support diver Peter Herbst had not found Mr. Shirley at the arranged 80-meter mark about 90 minutes into the operation, which was supposed to have yielded a body bag in 80 minutes. He dropped another 40 meters, where he received an ominous message written on a slate. Dave's not coming back. Derek Hughes phoned Mr. Vickers just under four hours after the dive had begun, and Mr. Vickers waited an hour before going to Mrs. Shaw's house to break the news that her husband had passed away. Mrs. Shaw had requested that the body of her husband not be recovered, but in the end, it was discovered. So what do you think about this incident? Do tell us in the comment section below if you like this video then please leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more amazing content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.